Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about romance books where one of the characters in the couple is scarred. Baby, baby. So with a scarred character often comes a damaged character, um, and I'm a sucker for damaged characters, honestly, so I'm a sucker for scarred characters. So without further ado, let's just get into these recommendations. First, I want to mention Brahash from Barbarian Alien by Ruby Dixon, the second book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. You can even see on the cover, kind of, um, his horn is gone and his face is scarred. Um, I don't know if you can really see it on the cover, but he is heavily scarred on his face and he's missing a horn. Um, so this is an alien romance. If you didn't know about the Ice Planet Barbarian series, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> but Rahash in here is a gruff and broody hero, and he realizes that his mate is Liz here, who is a kick A heroine um, who will take nothing from no man. And um, he kidnaps her <laughs> on this planet to kind of like force her and show her that they're meant to be together. Rosh in here thinks that he's not worthy of a mate because of the way that he looks and his past and what he's gone through. He thinks that there are way better males in their tribe that would be better suited to have a mate, but he doesn't want to let Liz go. He thinks that she deserves better, but he doesn't want to let her go. So he has to come to grips with like, either I let this woman go and not have her, or I just get over my issues. <laughs> And so he kind of has to get over his issues to keep this woman. But this is obviously a staple in a scarred character romance book because Rahash is definitely broody and scarred. Next, I have a Beauty and the Beast retelling for you. We have The Vixen and the Vet by Katie Regnery. So our heroine here is Savannah. She is a journalist and she goes back to her hometown after um, her career has kind of like ended, her big career. I think she was in like New York or something. So she moves back home and she finds this story that she wants to explore. She learns about Asher, who is kind of like the town recluse since she has been gone, he's moved to their town. And um, she's learned about Asher, who is a wounded veteran, who is an amputee and has many scars on him because of what he has gone through in war. And she realizes this could be a big story that she could write about. And so she tries to go and convince him that uh, his story needs to be told. And he is very damaged and very broody. And after much convincing and um, much groveling, um, he finally agrees to let her come to his house and like interview him and stuff. And then they end up falling for each other, even though they're both reluctant to. Asher is an amputee, an IED explosion ended up leaving him without a hand and with many scars on his body. So he's dealing with a lot of um, confidence issues and he has kind of like bundled himself up and locked himself up in his house so he doesn't scare people. He thinks that he could scare people. So there's a lot of things going on in Asher's brain and Savannah tries to convince him that he is handsome and amazing just the way he is. So another Ruby Dixon I have for you is When She Belongs. Um, this has our hero named Jurok, who's one of my favorite alien heroes ever. He is another wounded war veteran, an alien war veteran, however. And so he is also kind of like an amputee, but he has many cybernetic limbs now. Um, it's kind of like his prosthetic limbs are cybernetic ones. Um, and he is heavily scarred too on his skin and in his body. So Sophie in here is our heroine and she kind of gets put on this abandoned asteroid with Jerok. They're the only two people on this asteroid. It's very grumpy sunshine, by the way. Sophie is very bubbly and personable and um, just wants to get to know Jerok and like doesn't like being alone. And so she wants to get to know him and Jerok just like, leave me alone leave me alone to stew in my own self-hatred. But then obviously Sophie breaks down his walls and he starts to fall in love with this chatterbox of a woman. Sophie is so cute. I love her. There's also this alien pet that she has to bring around with her too. That's so cute. And the way that Jerok falls in love with Sophie is so swoony. I just love him. He's named Jerok the Jerk for a reason. <laughs> like that's what she nicknames him. Um, and he's obviously very broody and doesn't think that he deserves a woman or a mate because of what he looks like and what he's gone through. He's very similar to Rahash in that way. I then have Yaven from A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. This is a fantasy romance and a hate to love marriage of convenience. So Maddock in here realizes that his parents are dead and he thinks that Yaven, who is the princess to a neighboring like country, 
is the reason why his parents are dead. However, she's not. She ends up finding him while he's trying to find her to kill her. She's like, hey, don't kill me. I'm not the reason why your parents are dead. It's actually my father. The best way we could get back at him is if we get married and take over his throne. Maddox is all for her plan and wants to marry her, take over the land, whatever. But he doesn't believe that Yvette had nothing to do with his parents' death, even though she didn't. And so he hates her. And Yvette throughout this whole book is trying to convince him that she is not the person he thinks that she is. She was heavily abused by her father. She hates her father with a burning passion and wants nothing to do with him, wants him dead. He abused her so bad that she actually has many scars on her body and her leg. Um, she has a limp now because she was abused by her father so bad and beaten so bad. And so she has scars all along her leg as well as like a limp because her leg did not heal properly. And she is this tiny, frail looking woman that no one would assume on the outside is this amazing strong queen she's one of the strongest heroines i've ever read about ever like she is phenomenal amazing i strive to be like Yvonne. so her scars aren't uh visible on the outside at first but obviously once things get hot and heavy maddox starts to realize what Yvette has gone through and man does he put his foot in his mouth and we love to see it we love to see it and we love to see it grovel there's also book two in the series a touch of stone and snow that also has a scarred character our heroine in here is the scarred one she has a scar on her face years ago she was a part of this country she lived in this country city whatever village and she was the only survivor from this giant attack people think that she's to blame and so they cast her out she's heavily scarred from this battle and it's been years since she's been back to her country. Her childhood best friend in here and her have been pining over each other for years and they know that they are each other's soulmates and they've never been with another person because they know that they're meant for each other, um, but they haven't seen each other in years. Until this book, when years after her being cast out, he comes across his best friend and they have to go on this journey and adventure together to find something this one was really great too not as book not as good as book one but still really good and um our heroine in here is very self-conscious about her scar because there are these marks that this goddess puts on people that look like scars as well and people think that she's touched by this goddess and that's not a good thing because if you're touched by this goddess with like a scar on your face that means that you betrayed the goddess even though she didn't betray the goddess, she just has a scar on her face from this battle. So people think that she's betrayed the goddess when she hasn't. And so like, there's a bunch of other things going on in here too, but um, the scar character aspect in here was quite interesting to read about. Next I have Pool Girl by Cassie Mint. This is a novella that I just love. This was my first Cassie Mint that I ever read and it is so much fun. This is an age gap romance and kind of like a broody hero one too. Our heroine in here, she works kind of like at like an aquarium of sorts. Um, where she is kind of like the stage mermaid where she like goes in like the aquariums and pretends to be a mermaid for like the kids and stuff um, and so she loves the water and every day after work she gets on her pool float at her apartment complex and floats on the pool and she also does this not just because she loves the water but because she gets a glimpse into um, the kind of like is it like superintendent handyman of the apartment complex um, who she has a huge crush on. Like his office is right there. So that's why she floats outside on her pool floating in hopes that he notices her. And he's this big older guy who is scarred. Um, I think he is a war veteran. He thinks that she would never want him because of the way that he looks and how much older he is than her. But she just melts in a puddle for him every single time that she sees him. And <laughs> she can't get enough of him. And he is struggling really hard to um, understand why this young woman who's beautiful wants him. It is so good once like the dam finally breaks and they finally like reveal their feelings for each other. It is so, so swoony. I loved this novella. Next I have The Many Sins of Lord Cameron by Jennifer Ashley. This is book three in the Mackenzie's and McBride series. I do recommend reading these books in order just because like you'll understand the family more, but you do you, you don't have to listen to me. Um, I'm not the reading police. <laughs> so this one's about Cameron who is a single father. And this is his romance with Ainsley. And Ainsley is kind of like, I think like a lady in waiting or a, something like that for the queen. And she is trying to find something of the queen's in Cameron's room one day. Cameron ends up finding her, sneaking into his room and um, things get hot and heavy between the two of them. And it like sparks Cameron wanting more from this woman. Cameron has gone through a lot in his life. Um, he was previously married to a witch of a woman 
who would abuse him and scar him. And so he has scars all over his body from his abusive wife who is now dead. And so he's a very damaged hero and he sometimes believes that he's not good enough for Ainsley because of this. I just love Jennifer Ashley's writing. It is amazing. Um, and I, of course, love the relationship between Cameron and Ainsley and how Ainsley really like helps Cameron break down all of his walls. Another historical that I have for you is Nobody's Duke by Scarlett Scott. This is the romance between Ara and Clayton. Um, when they were younger, they ended up falling in love, but they're from rivaling families. And so they had to keep their love affair a secret. And the night that they were gonna run away together to get married, Ara doesn't show up to their meeting spot. And Clayton believes that Ara betrayed him because then some men of her father's come and find him and beat him up and beat him to a pulp to a point where like he has like scars all over his face now. And so he hates Ara ever since then. It's years later, Ara is now a widow. She was married and someone is out to kill her who also killed her husband. Clayton has been tasked to be her bodyguard. And so there's obviously this tension and angst between the two of them because Ara also thinks that Clayton betrayed her for a reason you read about in the book. So they both hate each other for certain reasons and both think that they're correct in hating each other when they actually are not. Our hero is heavily scarred on his face and Ara has no idea why. And then when she realizes what happened to him, she is mortified and can't believe that her father would do something like that to him. So I really recommend this one if you're a fan of, again, The Magic by Lisa Kleypas. There's a lot of similarities between the two. And so, yeah, I really recommend this one if, um, you're wanting a good second chance romance. Then I have Choosing Theo by Victoria Aveline. Our heroine in here, Jade, is a human woman who ends up getting abducted by Earth and gets stranded on this alien planet called Calcanian. And so on this planet, there's like these rules with uh, females and women that they have to be married. And so uh, Jade is forced to pick an alien husband. The husband that she picks is not what anyone expected. His name is Theo. Everyone's shocked as to why she chose Theo because Calcanian people are very revered for perfection and Theo has scars all over his body from a burning. Jade actually thinks he is so attractive. The person who's most shocked by Jade picking him is Theo himself. He can't believe that a woman would pick him to be his wife. When Jade picks him, he's like, she must be a spy or something. She can't actually want me. So I'm gonna try to do anything and everything to force her to tell me that she's a spy because there's no way this woman would actually want me. Um, and so he goes to great lengths to try to force her to say she's a spy when she's not actually a spy. Um, but this one is so entertaining. It's one of my new favorite alien romance books. I love it. And then the last one I wanna mention is also an alien romance. It's called Claiming His Version. In this series, in this sub-series of the Interstellar Rare Program, these books take place on a planet called Everest. On this planet, you are born with a marked mate. So you have a birthmark on your body and your faded mate also has a birthmark on their body in the same exact spot. So if you're born with a birthmark on your palm, your um, faded mate is born with a mark on their palm as well. And so our hero in here, Z, realizes that he has a faded mate named Helen. However, Z was a part of this alien war that left him heavily scarred. And every time someone or women see him, they run in fear because of his face being really scarred. And so he doesn't want to scare his mate. So he realizes that he has a mate. He dream shares with her. That's another thing that goes on with these faded mates. He's like, I don't want to scare this woman. So I'm not going to let her see my face until we're already mated because I don't want to scare her. When they first meet, she's blindfolded. And on this planet, in these customs, there's like three different claimings before you're fully mates. And so for the first claiming, she's blindfolded the whole time and doesn't know what he looks like. By the second claiming, she <laughs> ends up finagling her way around to like uh, get like a see-through blindfold so that she can like see him. And once she realizes who this man is, cause she has seen him before, she just wants him to know how much she cares for him and does not care at all what he looks like on the outside like she thinks he is so handsome and he doesn't scare her at all and so he's having a really hard time really like coming to grips with that though so i love this one it's one of my favorites by grace goodwin and so i really recommend it if you're wanting to read a grace goodwin alien romance but anyways there you have it those are some scarred hero recommendations for you please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things leave me a orange heart emoji in the comments section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i'll see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all